Hi, everyone. I'm Rosemarie Miller, and I have actress, entrepreneur, and the youngest executive producer in Hollywood, Marseille Martin. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, Marseille, can you tell me what it's been like growing up in the spotlight? Um, you know, it's it's hard because I never considered it spotlight per se, but I mean, it's honestly, it's been it's been amazing. I I, I have an amazing family that um, keep me balanced and keep me grounded. And my my friends back at home in L.A., they always support me. And um, I think it's all it's, it's all about balance for sure. And so I never really it, it never really felt like I was in this celebrity world of Hollywood. And um, I think that is kind of the key to it all is making sure you stay grounded and um, never forget where you come from. So, you know, it's it's been cool, I guess, but you know, nothing has really changed this far. I'm still the same, you know, little Dallas, Texas girl that, you know, grew up in a small town and that will always stay that way. Yes. Okay, so, so you are, the youngest executive producer in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What made you even want to do this? Um. See, I think that's that's a broad question because I feel like when it comes to, I've always wanted to be a creator of some sort uh, ever since I was little. I didn't know in what space, in what world, but I knew that was something that I wanted to do. And um, I feel like when it came to acting, that was one of the first things that you think of when you create content and, you know, want to pursue something in the entertainment world. So when it, I started acting when I was five, but I really started getting into the actual world of creating, meaning producing and the world of writing and directing when um, it was my, I think it was like the first season of Blackish. And that's when we came up with the idea of Little. So you know, it's it's hard to say when I really wanted to do this because it just came in different waves and in different levels. And I think that's that's the beauty about life is that God kind of makes the lane a little bit clearer for you to see so you can walk your path in a way that feels confident and that you can be present. So it's, you know, it's different. It's different. And it's, it's all very new still. But I am immensely grateful to be able to, you know, constantly find new things that I love to do every day when it comes to the industry and what I love to do. Yeah. Well, Marseille, Denzel Washington has a famous quote that he reportedly told his daughter, you're black, you're a woman, and you're dark skinned at that. So you have to be a triple quadruple threat. Mm -hmm. How has that quote applied to your life and your experience in Hollywood? When, when I hear that quote, I think of the ups and downs and the trials and tribulations that Black women go through when it comes to um, wanting to pursue their dreams and pursue their passions that don't necessarily have those, or you don't see them in leading roles as in a white male dominated world like the entertainment industry. So um, when I hear that, I just, I think of, I think of striving for your passion I think of um, the confidence that you need to have within yourself to keep moving and keep pushing forward to what you want to do. And so you can strive for greatness in your own way. And um, yeah, I mean, also too, the black women are dope. You can do anything, you know? So Absolutely. having that being, and it's, it's a threat to some people, you know, it's a threat to show your creativity and show what you what you can do and you know don't let it be good either because when it's good too it's like ah oh, shoot here she come so i i think that's that's i think that's what i get from the quote is that it can also be a weapon to a lot of people you know your your power is is everything and if you know your power that is an even an even bigger threat so mm -hmm. i think I, I i see it in so many levels in so many ways when it comes to that quote so going back to that quote, do you feel that part of that is the reason you've had to be more than just an actress? Why you've had to be an entrepreneur and a producer? Um, 
Hmm. Yes and no. I think I've, I come from a strong family of amazing black women who have paid the way in my family and who have broken boundaries within themselves and um, found their passions and found what they love to do. And they're really strong women. I mean, growing up in Texas, I had my, not only my dad, my, my dad was the only boy in the house, but my mom was there. My mom's mom was there. My great grandma lived with us and my aunts lived with us. And it was always, I, I just was always filled with, um, just some type of like resilience and power when it came to being around them. Cause I knew I was safe. I knew I was protected and secure. So when it came to coming into an industry that wasn't that all the way, and you didn't see a lot of women who looked like me, I think that that was a little, that was a little hard. And it was like a little like, Oh, okay. So this is, this is different, but I think that's what made me want to keep pushing and keep striving for what I love to do. And um, and honestly, it's it's also still fun, you know. It yes, there is some work that comes with into it, and yes, you get tired and your back hurts and all all the above. But you know, my parents always tell me when it when it doesn't become fun anymore for me, I can always switch gears. I can always, that's the cool thing about being young. Like I can go to college and, you know, figure out something new. And uh, that is still an option. But I, I believe when it comes to something like this, when you still see the beauty in it and you still see something that needs to change, that you are more than welcome to help with that change, um, that's important to me. And that's mm -hmm. what I want to keep doing and want to keep striving for and experiment. You know, if there's, yes, I'm an actress and a producer, but what else is there to do? You know, what else can I um, dip my toes in to see what, uh, if the, if the pool is warm or not. So, you know, I, I, I see it in a multiple, a multitude of ways, but you know, I, I don't, I don't carry the pressure of being the token black girl that has to do everything or needs to be a part of something because, um, you know, the issues and the goes, the roller coaster of everything, you know, as long as it, is still a passion and I could strive for the other young black girls coming behind me that want to do this. That's all that matters to me at the moment. Wow. That's well said. I'm curious mm -hmm. though, if you were to go to college, where would you go? Girl, it would probably be Spelman. It would be Spelman. As a uh, Howard woman, I don't know, but okay. All right, Spelman. <laughs> you, you know, I'm a, I never talk about this route in my life when it comes to college and, um, I mean, different schools, I guess. But I'm currently in Atlanta right now working on uh, real estate because that's something that I've always loved. But, you know, being able to take the time to talk to college kids that go to Clark and Howard and not Howard because that's in uh, DC, mm -hmm. but uh, talking to, um, I had a chance to talk to the, the kids from FAMU and Clark and Spelman and seeing their paths and how smart and intelligent they are is such a beautiful thing. So, you know, it's nothing that like is not for discussion because I, I do see a lot of beauty in going to a school and making those connections and finding your independence. There's some, I don't know where it comes from, but there's so much beauty behind it. And I, you know, it's a, it's for consideration, but we, we shall see. We shall. Okay. And what would be your major? Girl, I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> you didn't thought that like, far. I, <laughs> you know, I, I've talked to, I would, I would want to learn more about my culture and, in whatever state that is, I, I would want to do that. And also, like I said, real estate, I would want to get into um, what that looks like for, um, when I think about like financial stability and generational wealth, I think of creating and building uh, in in lands that, you, you, you know, you can't create more land, but you can create, um, you can create, I don't know, like power in that land, if that makes sense. Like you can you can hold power to where um, 
and I and I and I can see that and I can see that in homes. I can see that in in just building empires. And I, you know, I I don't know if that makes any sense, but I I I love getting into anything that has to do with real estate or my culture or as you can tell, I haven't really thought a lot about it, but you know, we, we shall see. I, but I, I would go to college for the independence of it all for sure, okay. for finding my own path and seeing what that looks like. Um, just for a different chapter, you know, Yeah, it's, it's different. And I'm from, you know, I'm, I'm from Texas, but I'm also from like the West coast because mm-hmm. I grew up in LA and I'm still in LA, but it's different. I like Atlanta. It's nice. Right? Well, let's get into your businesses. You have Mari by Marseille. That's your mm-hmm. your nail company. And you also have Genius Entertainment. That's your production company, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what inspired you to create both of these companies? Well, when it comes to Genius, um, I, I, I created Genius right when um, I created Little. And I, for me, I was on set of Little and it was just such a a mind boggling thing to me to where I was like, I have to do this again. Like there was like an adrenaline that came in while I was on set. And I, I, I'm gonna try my best to explain it the best as I can, but I would be on set and the, I can hear while I was doing the scene, I could hear my mom's words in the background, like, me and her just going back and forth of like what the scene should look like and just the little details of what she's wearing what her hair looks like and the movements that jordan does with april and i could hear that in the back of my head while portraying the scene and i was like this is insane it's like truly like a dream going into my reality and the adrenaline that i felt was like, oh my gosh, I could do this again and again and again. And I am so grateful to be in this space to where um, people listen. And with the with the right group of people, we can make things happen. And um, yeah, so after after little, I was like, yeah, we get, I want to make this happen way more, way more. Lots of fun. I didn't care about any of the titles. And I, I just wanted, I had fun. And I, that's the main thing. I had a good time and I I wanted to make myself proud because I'm my biggest competitor. You know, I wanted I wanted to see what else I can do and what else I can create and what I can make happen to where it's a beautiful thing to witness um, and for in front of the camera and for an audience while also working behind the scenes. And I, I just thought that was that was really dope the first time I did it. So that's what um, helped me create genius is that exact exact feeling, that thought that I can make this happen. And um, and yeah, there was a bunch of ups and downs in the beginning because of my age <laughs> and uh, bringing people on to help with the team. They're like, ah, that's not how that works. But <laughs> something with me and my family is that we, don't take no for an answer because we always find our yes and we make sure that things happen in the way where we create paths for other young black writers and directors and um, actors and actresses that need their chance and want their chance because there it is out there. And yeah, that was that was basically it. As long as you have like a powerful message behind it that I truly had a passion for, that's what drives the whole entire brand and business of genius. Um, When it comes to Mari, that was in the middle of the pandemic. So nobody was getting their nails done. Nobody was doing anything. And at first, actually, it was going to be a makeup brand. Um, I, I loved makeup. It was something that I learned how to do very well during that time of, um, being in my house. And if you go back, you can see a whole bunch of makeup tutorials that I used to do. And I was actually good at it. And, you know, it was something that I wanted to do. But we and we were close. We created all these formulas. I had the packaging, which still may see the light of day. But at the time, it was like, dang, I really looked at everybody's like, you know, 
I, I looked at the perspective of what the world was right at, at that moment. I was like, everybody and their mama is doing makeup. I was like, everybody, <laughs> which ain't an issue. You know, I'm, I'm, I never want to follow like what other people were doing. But at the same time, I was like, mm, I don't know if that's the right move for right now, because there is so much makeup out in the world right now. And of course, when you're a celebrity or when you are uh, a public figure, it's like, oh, there's money here. So we'll just do it. And I was like, oh, I don't want to be put in that pile because that isn't the case. But, you know, people don't listen. So I was like, all right, we'll, we'll switch. We'll do something else. So um, press ons made sense for me because back when I wasn't able to wear makeup and I didn't really have much control of what my hair looked like on set or or anything. I looked good regardless as a seven year old. But, you know, seven year olds don't wear like makeup mm-hmm. <laughs> at that time. You know, mm-hmm. our generation is different. Oh, now. They I wear know. Makeup all the time. <laughs> but, yeah. But uh, back then, you know, it was it was different. Um, all I had was chapstick and probably some eyebrow gel. And, you know, I went on about my day. But my nails was something that I felt like I kind of had control over in a space where I could figure out the designs and what I wanted to create and I can match my nails with this outfit. And I thought in the beginning, I was like, it's a kitty thing, but I'll do it. And back when I did Little Press um, for, for, for the movie, I was on the red carpet and I saw so many people wear press-ons. I was like, oh my gosh, I have the same press-ons. I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. I was like, what? One, one auntie got offended in the elevator because she was like, uh, how, how do you know these are press-ons? I'm like, because I got the same one, <laughs> And, you know, I, I just got so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is something that everybody does, not just little kids, like everybody from all different ages you know, because people have work, people need to use their hands a lot. So when it's that time to do different events, they need their, they need their nails done. And the, the market was so small at the time. I was like, I can make these look dope. I can make these happen and, um, you know, put my inner seven year old in the forefront of this this project. And, you know, it was also an experimenting thing. Like I wanted to see where how far it went and, you know, um, how it would respond to people that actually wear press on nails and yeah we just we made it happen I switched gears really quickly I called my team and I was like I think I want to do something different um hear me out (laughs) and you know let's let's go and let's get into it so um that was like in the middle of the pandemic and we switched it we made it happen and it dropped uh February of last year how's business doing Business is great. We actually have a lot of, uh, we just dropped a new collection called the Triple D Collection, which is inspired by my my Dallas roots. And I I wanted to, I wanted to touch on that because, you know, I wanted that to kind of get out the way. Like I'm from Dallas, Texas. This is the, this is the collection and this is what you see. And I wanted to show it in all neutrals and different brown tones and something that anybody can wear at any time of the day. Um, I can also send the stats to you whenever because I don't have them at the moment, but it, it is it is pretty dope. And I am super proud of what we have done in just, I think like a year and a half. So I am I am incredibly, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to show everybody really what I can do with the brand and, you know, Eventually, it'll expand into something that's more lifestyle and something that I have always wanted it to be, you know, maybe touching on makeup and skincare and all the other things. But at the moment, I think press-ons is something that everybody can somewhat relate to and feel good about and, you know, feel confident within themselves. Right. So I kind of want to go back to what you were saying about genius entertainment. Listening to you speak about that. It sounds like you you were really working in your purpose and at such a young age. I, I see so many young people these days wandering aimlessly through life. And I, I see grown people wandering aimlessly through life. You know, they don't really know what they want to do, what they want to be. Mm-hmm. How do I say this? What? How do you know? Like, how do you know this 
This is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Um, I think because of me knowing my potential and it may sound really surface level, but I'm, I know I'm good at it. You know, <laughs> this is something that I know I could be incredibly dope at it if I give my 1000%. Um, and like I said, I am my biggest competitor. I am my biggest fan. I'm also my biggest enemy, meaning enemy as in like, I, I overthink a lot. I compete with myself a lot. I'm my own, I'm my only competitor. There's nobody else in, in my lane as I see. Like I, I'm always back and forth and seeing if I can top this, if I can top that. And I think that's probably the Leo with me because I'm a triple Leo, but how do I know? I, I just, when there is, there's a feeling that you get when you do what you love that is just, like there's no words that can express ex express the feeling that you get you know express the the passion that that you know you can do something it's it's just it's amazing you know um it's a gift um it's the true meaning of talent you know everybody can i feel like everybody can find um every, i feel like everybody can be an actor everybody can be an actress but when it comes to knowing that you're that you're good at it and that you can really dive into a project whether you are in front or behind the camera and make it your own it's just there's something there's something beautiful about it and um yeah you know and that obviously i think that that might change throughout the years of course since i am still 18 and i may want to switch gears a little bit but i think that at the moment it's just it's just a feeling it's just something that's like you know what this it makes sense it makes sense for me and it makes sense for what makes me happy you know and i i think that's what everybody needs to focus on more and and not what people see from the outside looking in like i'm doing this because i have to do this or to to be famous or whatever it's not it's never it's never about that it's just more of what what you love to do and what makes me confident you yeah. know it, it's it's good to it's good to feel like you're good at something yeah. you know and I know I'm good at this so I'm I'm incredibly honored and and grateful of the Yeah. I, I saw Steve Harvey say somewhere, your gift is something you do the best with the least amount of effort. Is that what it is for you? You can agree? Uh, you know what's funny? I, I do a lot of projects right now and currently I'm working on a project with my parents. Meaning, it, 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 like, like what Steve Harvey said, I, I believe when it comes to something that is supernatural to you, it, it's, it's like magic in a sense. Like, man, like memorizing lines for me is just something that is probably one of the most easiest things for me. Like, I, it's funny because like I can memorize lines in like two minutes and just scan it in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, I can look at it, I can look at a script. And then it will just be, I, I can see the script while I am doing, doing the thing. And it's just the way your brain works sometimes. And, you know, I, I think that is the cool thing about knowing this is what, this is what you can do. This is what you can do best. And 
that, I think that's that's the dope part of it all. So I I completely agree. So the day that a project lands on my lap and I have to give my 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 biggest effort, you know, <laughs> um, that's when I'll know I'm like, okay, this is something that is is just it's it's amazing. It's yeah. something that that needs to be done. And speaking of projects, don't you have something coming to Disney Channel this month? Yes, yes, you do. It's Saturdays, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about that? How did you pitch this to Disney? This is Disney Channel. How did okay. you? Yeah. What's funny is, and it was like it was three years ago. It was almost four years ago. Yeah. Um, I was just starting You did a good job. <laughs> But Marissa, you said in a previous interview, this is definitely a unique type of show, and I definitely think it's needed, not only for everyone, but for our Black girls out there that truly don't feel the confidence that they need to feel. Have you struggled with your own confidence growing up? Like, and 
the am I good enough or do I just switch gears or the um, or the am I doing enough or not doing enough like what else do I have to do to keep pushing and that's kind of what I mean by being my biggest enemy as well because I'm a massive overthinker I try to understand everybody's point of view um, more than mine so, I don't know, I think that was, I think that would be the main thing. I don't know if that touches on confidence a little bit, but, you know, I think when it comes to being a young black girl in a space that you are doing something different, there is a lot of firsts um, that you also, like, step into. Yeah. I think I think it's a little more nerve wracking than usual, which you like shakes up my confidence a little bit. But I think that um, that was something that I struggled with for for quite a long time. So. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for doing this interview. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Yes.